Happy Wednesday from the Community Church of Mount Pleasant. This is Pastor David, and I am so glad that you have decided to, to join us today to let us come join you, visit with you. Uh, we are in, uh, in late January now. We're almost ready to move into February. I can't believe it. Here we go. Time is flying, and, and uh, we at CCMP are off to a great start. We finished our series first three weeks on uh, the elements of spiritual growth. We talked about our journey. We talked about taking your next step. And you know, this has turned into a, a little bit bigger than a series. In fact, there's there's carryover. We, we heard last night at our, we had a leadership meeting last night, and 54 of our, our core leaders, our ministry team leaders showed up, and we, we had a pep rally. We had some, some everybody share their ministry updates, and and we had a couple people, several people, say, you know what, I, I've prayed and God has shown me my next step, what, what I need to do to take my next step. One of our ladies, our, our young ladies, college age, her next step was to start a college Bible study. And uh, they have already doubled each time they've met. And that was exciting. And one of our teenagers, I believe a 14-year-old, said that he had been praying and asking the Lord what, what could he do on his next step as a 14-year-old. He and some friends are going to start working and here meeting and cleaning at the church, which will take some, some pressure off of the people who now who volunteer and clean. And uh, I, I, I want to challenge you. I'm inspired by these people. One, one fella in our church who's an adult, he's decided that his next step is to be baptized. And it's been a big deal for him. So barriers are being broken. God is doing things as people move forward, forge forward in their journey with Christ on their spiritual spiritual walk. So uh, right there where you are, I want to ask you, what is your next step in your in your journey with the Lord as, as we move into 2021? Uh, we started a new series from the book of 1 Kings. We're going to do a character study on Elijah, man of miracles. We saw some miracles last week. This week we're going to see another specific miracle. But a couple things. Uh, Sunday we started our third service. Uh, on each Sunday we'll have a 9.30, 11, and now a 12.30 service. This will be a mask-only service. We started last week at a, a surprisingly good turnout. And uh, just let that know, let you know, if you, several people felt more comfortable coming. They had not been back yet, and they were just glad to be at church, really. It was exciting. Um, we have this Friday night, our couples group will be meeting. They meet once a month right now. They'll meet Friday night at 7 here at the mill and for their discussion and Bible study. Then Saturday morning is our men's breakfast, our, our men's prayer breakfast, the, the first one of the year last Saturday of every month, this Saturday morning, it's going to be a lot of great food and uh, just a good time together. So please join us. Uh, we have our baby bottles. We're returning in this Sunday. We had several bought back. So put some cash in them, bring them back, and this will go to support Gate Pregnancy Resource Center, which is helping uh, mothers, young couples, families uh, with, with uh, choices other than abortion choices of life for this unborn and so we're excited about that that will be this Sunday and uh, and we, we're just excited about God's doing a lot of stuff here at our church and we're thankful and I want to do a devotional for you today a quick one and uh, <clears throat> this is 2 Corinthians Paul writing a letter to the Corinthians and and uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 8 through 10 now the miracle this week this, this is are you ready for your miracle because we're studying miracles about Elijah. There's going to be miracles every week. So this one is a, a, is a specific one where he is staying with a, a widow. God sent him to Zarephath to, to sustain him. And uh, there's a drought. And the place he where he was staying, the brook dried up. And God sent him to Zarephath and to meet this widow. He took him in. And she was poor, had a son. And, and uh, God began to supply and, sh and provide for them more meal to fix food with and, and oil to fix, to cook with, and God sustained them. But something bad happened, and that is the son became ill and he passed away, her son, her, her child. And she was upset 
and angry at Elijah and said, you've come to, man, you've, you've brought this on us. And, and, and Elijah was upset and he was confused. And, and he prayed that God would bring this child back to life. Well, he did. But I want to read you this verse about, about life from death. Death unto life. First Corinthians or Second Corinthians chapter two, uh, one verses eight through ten. For we would not, brothers, that have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. We were threatened and in great danger. We were facing death. We didn't know what to do. We were in danger. Verse nine. But we had the sentence of death on us. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead. God raises the dead. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver, in whom we trust that He will yet deliver us. Aren't you glad that you don't get what you deserve? Now let, let me ask you a question. Have you ever got caught? And, and you got caught, and you got in trouble. You got your hand in the cookie jar. You were guilty and you got caught. I want to ask you what happened. Did you get the book thrown at you or did you get some grace? And I know back home as a child, I would get, I know it's hard to believe, I'd get in trouble occasionally because, you know, I was a boy. And uh, I knew that if my mama was, if it wasn't too bad, my mama would discipline me. And she'd say, go get a hickory and she might spank me. And that wasn't fun, it wasn't pleasant, but I knew that if it was something bad, my, da my daddy would deal with me. Now there was a vast difference in my mama's dealing with me and my daddy dealing with me. Daddy didn't use a, a, a hickory switch. Daddy used his belt. And if you've never been on the wrong end of that, it's not a good place to be because the belt is, is, uh, is severe. It was like the death sentence for a little boy. But sometimes I got grace. And, and here's what this passage says. God, we deserve death. We, we deserve death because of our sin. That, that's, that, that's, we're guilty. We, we, don't even, we can't even make excuses. We're, get, we're The Bible says we're all sinned. We've all, we're all guilty. And, and our, we got caught. And the... the the reward for that is death, is eternal death, is hell, separation from God. And, and God, physically, who comes and He raises people from the dead, and He heals people, and He did that for Elijah, and, and it's, a, it's the same principle spiritually. Even though we were guilty of sin, God gives life. We deserved sin. We deserved punishment. We deserved death. God says, you know what? I'm going to give you grace. Instead of death, I'm going to give you life. We have had the death sentence pronounced on us. And the devil reminds us of that. And God comes along and gives us grace. I wonder. I, I know you're guilty. I'm guilty. Because we're sinners. We're all sinners. Have you accepted God's grace? His His. Has he, has he given you forgiveness and life instead of death? He wants to. He has made provision for you. And so uh, God raises the dead, and God gives us spiritual life as well. Thanks for joining us today. I, I want to give you encouragement. Wherever you are, whatever you're facing, God is bigger. God loves you. And if you don't have a place to go on Sunday, come join us. We'd love to have you here. A lot of good people here. We're praying for you, we love you, and we'll see you Sunday.